Hi friends, my name is Zenith Kasrati Jalil. I welcome you all to Love for English videos. In this video, we are going to learn root words. You might ask the question, why root words? Root words are going to become panacea for all the vocabulary problems what you have been facing so far. Knowing to speak in English, having a good bunch of vocabulary in the basket of your vocabulary while speaking in English are two different things. At least not for the sake of you using them, you want to use them in the daily conversation. For the sake of understanding what the other people are telling, vocabulary becomes very, very important. I'm calling root words a panacea because this is one of the authenticated, very conventional methodologies of building vocabulary. There are plenty of methodologies to learn vocabulary for sure. But this is going to be one of the strongest methodologies plus one of the easiest too if you fall in love with the same. I'm making this video to make sure that you fall in love with vocabulary building and you start playing with the words anytime, anywhere while conversing with someone in English. So why wait? Let's get started. Before we could talk about different set of root words, Let's understand few things about root words. You can even consider this section as introduction to root words. Now take up this example here. There is a word called enchanted. I have divided this word into three different parts. En, chant and ed. We all know very well if we add anything in the beginning of any word is actually called as a prefix. Okay, so here en is a prefix. If we add anything at the end of any word will be called as a suffix, right? And I should be telling you prefixes and suffixes also play a vital role in terms of vocabulary building. Every word is actually a combination of a prefix, a root and a suffix. In fact, prefixes and suffixes are also considered root words. Okay, so as n is a prefix and ed is a suffix in the example, chant will be considered as a root word. Okay, so in this video, we are going to learn solid root words like this. Our entire intention in this video is to learn the solid root words, right? So I want you to know that well in advance because this is something, the next level of learning vocabulary for sure. The second thing what we all need to know about root words is all the root words what we'll be talking about in this entire video are contributed by four different languages which are they Greek, German, Latin and French. So all the root words are either contributed by French or Latin or German or Greek for sure. Okay. The last one what you need to know is remember root words can be anywhere in the word. Right. Let's imagine this is a word. The root word can be in the beginning. The root word can be in the middle. The root word even can be at the end. Okay. So the position of root word in a word will not change the significance of root words at any point of time. If there is a root, that's going to help us to find out the meaning of the word or at least to guess the meaning of the word for sure. Okay. So these are the three things what you need to know about root words. So now let's not waste even a single second. Let's get started with the root directly. So the first example root what I have for all of you is psalm. Psalm is a Latin root which means sleep or slumber. Slumber is equal to sleep. Sleep is equal to slumber. Both are actually synonyms to each other. So there are five words what you can see in the column of examples, right? Insomnia, somnambulism, somniloquy, hypersomnia and somnolent. So what is the beauty here? What exactly we need to learn? Remember, the meaning of the root will always reflect in the meaning of each word. So I'm actually conveying the message over here. The meaning slumber, you will get to see reflecting in the meaning of all these words what we have listed out under examples. Let's check whether what we are saying is making sense or not. Okay. What's the meaning of the word insomnia? Insomnia means sleeping 
disorder right if you are a person who's not able to sleep in the night appropriately and you have a lot of difficulty in terms of going to bed definitely you are suffering from insomnia insomnia means sleeping disorder is this connected to sleeping or not of course yes right let's go to the second word somnambulism somnambulism means sleep walking somnambulism means sleep walking okay so once again connected to sleep go to the third word this is the beauty of root words which makes me fall in love with root words over and over again look at this word somni loqui it is actually made up of two different root words the first root word is som the second root word is loq l o q or l o c u l o q or could be l o c doesn't matter okay loq is a root word which means speaking or talking it's very very easy to understand we have one word which is made up of two different root words the meaning of somnus sleep the meaning of loq is speaking or talking so could we guess the meaning of the word here absolutely right you have nailed it the meaning of the word somniloquy is sleep talking lot of people when they go to bed they start talking when they are in the deep sleep as if they are really conversing with someone in person so that's exactly is called as sleep talking that's exactly is called as sleep talking the next word is hypersomnia hyper means what hyper means actually too much right som means sleep so can we guess the meaning over here the meaning is very very simple if you have the tendency of sleeping too much you sleep in the morning you sleep in the noon you sleep at night etc then definitely you are suffering from hypersomnia you sleep too much hyper too much som sleep hypersomnia sleeping too much or too much of sleep the last word what we have is somnolent somnolent is a person som definitely means sleep so somnolent means a person who always feels drowsy or always feels sleepy okay so in spite of you doing everything and anything you still feel drowsy whether you are at office you are at school you are at college you always keep yawning you keep uh, on feeling sleepy definitely you are a somnolent means you always feel drowsy now look at this entire picture this is so beautiful how many words we learned we actually learned five different words point to be noted five different words as all the five words what we learned have one root called som they have something to do with sleeping directly or indirectly for sure that's exactly is the beauty which will make you also fall in love with root words i guarantee you on the same now as we have opened a window for lock let's learn the root lock so what's the meaning of the root lock okay it could be both the spellings l o c or l o q that is one thing what you have to definitely keep it in your brains so we have the first word over here colloquial you can see l o q so definitely colloquial has something to do with speaking or talking for sure because the meaning of the roots lock is actually speaking right so what is the meaning of colloquial colloquial means informal language the language what we use casually to speak is actually called as colloquial which has certainly do to something with speaking for sure loquacious one of the most important words which has been appearing in many competitive examinations plenty of times in the form of synonyms and antonyms or sometimes in reading comprehension too loquacious loquacious actually means a very talkative person you are like a chatterbox speaking is like your part time job so if you are that kind of person you are actually called as loquacious next word colloquy colloquy also has a lo q lock which means conversation or a talk with anybody for that matter somniloquy we already discussed under som so we don't have to discuss but we can definitely recollect over here som is a root which means sleep 
Lok is a root which means speaking. Somniloquy means sleep talking. Right? The next word is eloquent. Eloquent means a person who speaks very elegantly with a lot of articulation. Okay? So, for example, Dr. Shashi Tharoor. Whenever he speaks, he speaks so well. So, you can definitely say he is an eloquent person. He speaks so well. He is so eloquent. Right? Elocution. I'm sure you must have heard this word uh, if you have participated in elocution competition. Elocution means speaking on something, speaking about a topic. Basically, giving a speech on a particular topic. Right? Giving a speech on a topic. So, elocution speech which is again connected to speaking interlocutor interlocutor lock once again you can see yellow c lock the meaning is a person who partakes in a dialogue or in a conversation so if you're all sitting together and having a discussion on one or the other topic formally or informally you can actually consider yourself as interlocutor the next word is Circumlocation. Circumlocation means a person who speaks in circles. Okay. You can see circum which stands for circle. You have L-O-C, lock which means speaking. So, if you always speak in circle, definitely it can be called as circumlocation. Speaking in circle. We have a beautiful idiom for the same. We call it as beating around the bush. You never come to the message directly. You keep on giving so much unnecessary explanation altogether. You are definitely a circumlocator. Next word is colloquium. The next word is colloquium. Colloquium means an academic conference or a seminar where people speak about something which is connected to academics, which is connected to studies. The last but not all the least, grandiloquent. Okay, lock once again you can see it over here. So definitely it has something to do with speaking for sure. Grandiloquent is a person who boasts about himself. You can see the word here, pompous. You speak so much saying, you know, what my father is, you know, what I have done, you know, how many items I have, you know, what all I have achieved so far. So, for you, it's all about I, me, myself. You speak so much about yourself, extravagantly. You are a pompous, definitely, you can call yourself as a grandiloquent person who speaks a lot about himself or herself. So, again, friends, how many root words we learned? Only one, but how many words? It's exactly close to 10 words. One root word which made us learn 10 words, right? The next root word, what I want all of you to learn is andro. Andro is a root word which means man or male. Could be both singular and plural. So, we have five words once again under this root. We have androgenous. Androphobia, Androcracy, Miss Andre, Androphile. So let's learn this. I think this route is going to open doors for many other routes what you must have not expected to learn. So stay with me. Be awake, be alert, be active because things are going to get connected to one another now. And this is really, really going to be very fascinating. Okay. Look at the first word. It says Androgenous. Androgenous is one word which is made up of two root words. First root word is andro. Second root word is jin. Remember, g-y-n jin is a root word which means woman or female. So anything connected to woman or female usually starts with g-y-n, right? You have a lot of examples over here uh, saying gynecology, gynecologist, gynec, gynophobia, right? I'm going to show you the list of words under jinn in some time. So, for time being, what you have to understand is jinn means woman or female. 
andro means man so what's the meaning of androgynous androgynous means one person with both the features of a male and a female simultaneously i repeat androgynous means one person with both the features of male and female simultaneously so what is androphobia again it is made up of two root words the first root is definitely andro second root is phobia andro means man phobia means fear everybody knows about it phobia is a very famous word which is also a root word which means fear so fear of men is actually called as androphobia andro crazy andro again is a root which means man or a male crazy is a root which means rule we are going to learn this root in detail stay with me until then okay andro man crazy rule rule by men or rule by a male is actually called as andro crazy today in our society especially in our indian society we actually have andro crazy we expect a man to be the head of an institution it could be the institution called family or wedding or anything for that matter so that's like exactly is called as androcracy okay misandry this is again beautiful miss is a root word which means hate which means hate so andry andro is a root word which means man so what could be the meaning if you are a person who hates men you carry a lot of hatred towards men or males definitely you are called as a misandry okay hated towards men the last but not all the least androphile androphile actually is again a word which is made up of two root words andro is male phil is another root word which means love phil actually means love andro means male so if you excessively love men in a different sense in other words you are sexually attracted to men you are definitely considered as androphile these are the words what we had to learn under the umbrella of andro now as we have already opened a window for gin phobia crazy and phil plus miss we will learn those root words immediately now let's learn the root word crazy i already told you we learned a word called andro crazy right that is the word which opened the window for crazy andro means man crazy means rule rule by men andro crazy right so now look at this how many words we have under the umbrella of crazy democracy bureaucracy plutocracy aristocracy autocracy monocracy mobocracy and theocracy once again this will open a lot of windows for some more root words get ready for the same fasten your seat belts for sure democracy is a word which is made up of two root words which are they first one is definitely crazy the one what we are discussing which means rule dem is a root word which means people make a note of it very quickly dem is a root word which means people crazy means rule rule by the people is actually called as democracy one of the best things which happened in our country india for sure right bureaucracy so that de definitely it has something to do with ruling for sure we all know bureaucracy means rule by the officials crazy rule bureaucracy rule by the officials plutocracy and aristocracy are two political theories which were introduced by plato to the world of political science and to the society too plutocracy means rule by the rich aristocracy means rule by the noble if you are a person who has a lot of money you automatically get the power to rule the people so that you could use that money that richness what you have you could use that money and richness what you have towards the welfare of people okay which is so beautiful that's why it is ruled by the rich aristocracy ruled by the noble if you are a person who is very well known you have a good name and fame you automatically get the power and authority to rule the people so that concept is actually called as aristocracy ruled by the noble 
autocracy once again autocracy is a word which is made up of two root words first one is auto auto is a root which means self crazy is a root which means rule right so rule by self is actually called as autocracy we have seen a lot of autocrats hitler mussolini julius caesar who believed in autocracy rule by self concept so strongly that they wanted to conquer the entire world that's why these three people are called as autocrats okay next one monocracy again made up of two root words mono is a root which means single or one crazy is a root which means rule so rule by one person is actually called as monocracy for some people autocracy and monocracy might be sounding and seeming the same but let me remind you autocracy means rule by self that self could be anybody that could be you or me that could be anybody across the globe okay but monocracy is a word which is actually connected to monarchy in other words if you are a person who belongs to royal blood and you have to rule the territory the people the next after the death of your father so definitely you are called as a monocrat you'll never be called as an autocrat okay hitler mussolini julius caesar were not monocrats they were autocrats because they did not belong to any royal family the next word is mobocracy who doesn't know the word mob mob actually means group of violent people mob is a collective noun and collective nouns are always singular in collective nouns we speak about group of something right so if you do not know what is collective nouns all about you want to learn that in detail please to watch the video on subject verb argument so mob means group of violent people crazy means rule so rule by group of violent people will be called as mobocracy right so the last but not all the least is theocracy this is again beautiful the or theo is a root word which means god crazy means rule rule by god is actually called as theocracy obviously the one and only creator of the entire universe is definitely not interested to get into one of its creations called the earth and to come and rule over here rule by religious leaders okay so this is about crazy we have so many words we in fact learned so many words over here democracy bureaucracy plutocracy aristocracy autocracy monocracy mobocracy and theocracy 